a very good morning to the students so now let's begin on our next topic under unit 4 which talks about unpaid seller and his rights so we have divided in lecture into the two parts of unpaid seller and his rights wherein unpaid seller has two rights which we discuss on and in the this lecture i would deal with his one right of the unpaid seller and in the next lecture i will deal with the second right of the unpaid seller so let's begin our lecture first of all it is necessary to understand that who is an unpaid seller so the definition of the unpaid seller is present under section 45 clause 1 of the sales of goods act now it simply means a seller who has not been paid for the amount of the goods is called as an unpaid seller a simple meaning of it suppose i went to buy a particular product and i took the goods or i took the product i came back home and i did not pay the price i told him that i'll pay it after two days because i don't have the cash so that means that person who has given me that goods is an unpaid seller now this unpaid seller has certain rights which he can exercise over the buyer so now let's discuss the meaning of the unpaid seller under section 45 clause 1 in certain cases when a buyer refuses or fails to pay the requisite amount to the seller seller becomes an unpaid seller and can have various rights against the buyer so according to section 45 clause 1 the seller of goods is deemed to be an unpaid seller where the whole price of the goods have not been paid or rendered or when a bill of exchange or any other negotiable instrument such as check has been received as unconditional payment which has been dishonored so two points of unpaid seller are present in the section 45 clause 1 number one when the whole price of the goods has not been paid or rendered or <clears throat> for example in the bill of case or negotiable instrument it has been received but it has been dishonored so seller also then the seller becomes an unpaid seller seller also includes a person who is in a position of a seller that is also an agent a consigner who had himself paid or is responsible to pay for the price which is present in the section 45 clause 2 which means an unpaid seller can also become be an agent or a consigner in the position of the seller let's take an example for example x sold certain goods to y at dollar 50 and received a check when he received the check went to the bank the check was dishonored due to the <coughs> not sufficient amount into the bank excuse me so therein x is an unpaid seller because he did not receive the price of the goods as a whole now when we talk about rights of the unpaid seller the rights of unpaid seller is divided into two aspects number one right against the goods which means whatever goods he is delivering to the buyer selling it to the buyer and second the right against the buyer personally in this lecture we will just discuss about right against the goods and in the next lecture we'll talk about rights against the buyer personally so number one is rights of unpaid seller against the goods an unpaid seller has certain rights against the goods and the buyer these are as follow which ranges from different sections of sales of goods act now the first kind of a right of this unpaid seller against the goods are right of lien which is present from section 47 to 49 lien we have discussed this earlier also which simply means a right wherein if a person has not got the price of the goods he can keep the possession of the goods unless and until the debt or the price over that goods have been paid on completely so lien is a right which seller of the goods can exercise when the buyer has not paid the price of the goods under this seller can retain the position of the goods as an agent or the bailey for the buyer the seller can retain his position as per section 47 which talks about various points that in case buyer is insolvent when the terms of the goods were sold on credit card which has been expired or goods goods sold without any stipulation as to credit which means if the buyer has not paid for the goods the seller has the right over the lien that is to keep the possession of the goods as a bailey or an agent until and unless the buyer pays him the amount in certain circumstances he can exercise his right of lien if the buyer is insolvent when the terms of goods sold on credit is expired or when the goods are sold without any stipulation as to credit <coughs> 
Next point, when the goods are sold on credit, right of lien is suspended during the term of credit and lien exists only when the price of goods not on any additional charges, which means in the case of a credit, the lien would exist only on price of goods, not on any ex ex additional or extra charges. According to section 48, if the seller has delivered a part of unpaid goods, he can exercise his right of lien on the rest, which means if I have ordered 1000 kgs of wheat from a person shop X, I have paid for 50 kgs and I have not paid for 50 kgs. So, the seller would be liable to act on the 50 kgs of unpaid rice. In the case of Greece versus Richardens, the seller had delivered a part of three parcels of tea comprised in the sale and they had not been paid for the part which remained with them. They were allowed to keep it till the payment of price. However, a part of goods delivered which show an agreement to waive the lien, the seller cannot remainder which means termination, termination of liens takes place where the seller loses the possession of the goods. So simply means that when I have delivered a part of unpaid goods, so I would act my right of lien over that unpaid, the rest of the goods. Now in this case law, three parcels of tea were there comprising of the sale and none of them would have been paid. So I would exercise over the payment of all those three parcels of tea. Termination of liens comes to an end when the seller loses the possession of the goods. As per section 49, under these circumstances, the right of lien is terminated. Now, how the right of lien of the seller is terminated? Number one, waiver of lien. Right of lien is an implied right attached by the law in every contract of sale. Seller has an autonomy to waive his right and it may be expressed or implied under the conduct of the seller which means when he loses the possession of the goods he may either explicitly or impliedly waive his right of lien next point is when the buyer or agent lawfully obtains the possession of the good now once the buyer got the possession of the goods from the seller which means once the buyer has paid for all the price of the goods to the seller all the rights of seller in respect of the goods cease to be exist the seller can recover the price as a normal debt because the acceptance of possession gives absolute unqualified and indivisible rights of the goods to the buyer. When the goods are given again to the seller for repair, he cannot access his right of lien, which simply means if Mr. X has ordered some product from Y, he has not paid it. But after 10 days, if he has paid the products, uh, price of the products to X, then the X or Y would now possession would be over and from that his lien gets right of lien gets completely over when and suppose now y was not satisfied certain repairing of the goods was needed he again returned it to x therein x would not have exercise of right of lien because the buyer has lawfully paid the price of the goods and have obtained the possession of the goods when the seller delivers goods to a carrier or other bailey for the purpose of transmission to the buyer without reserving the right of disposable of goods, which means when the seller has disposed, delivered the goods to the carrier for transmission, his right of lien ceased, but the right to stoppage in transaction is still accessible by him. In case seller regains possession of goods in the transit of stoppage of his rights of lien is revived, which means that now suppose X has ordered some product from Y and Y has delivered it through a carrier. So once the goods have been delivered through the carrier, from therein the right of lien of the seller, that is the Y gets over. From that his right of stoppage will start in transit, which means in the transit it is going on. So he will exercise his right of stoppage. I would explain, we will explain this study, the next right, that is right of stoppage in transit of the goods. So we would understand much better. Just understand that once goods are out from the possession of the seller, during the stoppage for the transit of the goods, from there, the right of the lien of the seller gets terminated. Let's understand with the case law. In Valpy versus Gibson, the goods were delivered to the buyer shipping agent who had put them on a board of a ship, but the goods were returned to the seller for repackaging while they were still with the seller and the buyer became insolvent and seller became unpaid seller. 
and he retained the goods in the exercise of their lien. It was held that they have lost their lien by delivery to the shipping agent. On the contrary, when the seller has received the rights of disposal, his right of lien continues till the end of transit. And the seller cannot lose his right of lien just because he has obtained a decree for the price of goods. It simply means once the goods are out from the seller for the delivery through a transit, there his right of lien gets over. But he, on a contrary, if he has received the right of a disposable, then his lien would continue till the transit. Next right which the seller has, that is the unpaid seller has, is against the goods, is right of stoppage of goods in transit, which is ranges from section 50 to 52. When the goods have been transferred to a carrier or bailey for the purpose of transmission to the buyer who has become insolvent, the seller has right to stop the goods in transit in order to protect himself against the loss that might arise due to insolvency. So which means once the goods have been in a transmission to the buyer by through the carrier or the bailey, the seller would stop it if the buyer has become insolvent. As per section 50, there are four essential for the to exercise the right of stoppage of goods in transit. First, unpaid seller, we need to be. Second, buyer became insolvent. Third, property should have passed to the buyer, which means it has been in the transmission to the buyer. Next, property should be in the course of transit, which means that suppose Mr. X has ordered certain goods from Y. Today, Y has kept the goods into the carrier to deliver it into a place, say another city, Delhi, from Bangalore. Now the goods are in the transit. Y is the unpaid seller. The goods are into the transit. Now within that transit of the goods from Bangalore to Delhi, the buyer became insolvent. Then only now seller would exercise his right of stoppage in the goods in transit. The course of transit depends upon the capacity of the middleman to hold the goods. Middleman means the carrier or the bailey. Should be intervening person between the seller who has parted with the goods and the buyer who has not yet received the goods has, as it was, this was held in the case law of Scotman's versus Lanchise Yokoshai Relival railway company which simply means the middleman the carrier or the bailey of the goods which act in the behalf of on the place of seller between the seller and between the buyer section 50 also lays down the rules and regulations related to commencement and the end of transit which means how the commencement of a transit takes place and how it is ended so this section is divided into several seven subsections which solve the issues related to commencement and the end of the transit. So let's discuss all the subsections one by one. First section is delivered to the buyer. Goods are considered to be in transit from time when they are delivered to the carrier or the bailey for the purpose of transmission to the buyer. Till the goods are received by buyer himself or his agent takes the delivery, which means delivery to the buyer. So first section is delivery to the buyer. So once goods are taken out in the transit and they are delivered on to the carrier or to the bailey for the transmission to be delivered to the buyer, Till then, goods are received by the buyer himself or his agent, that is the delivery of them. Let's understand with the case law. In the case of Great India Peninsula versus Hamna Das, the seller consigned the goods with GIP Railway Company for transportation to the buyer, which means seller, the carrier was GIP Railway Company. On the arrival at the destination, company had delivered the goods to the buyer who had loaded them on his cart, but the cart had not yet left the railway compound. Till then, a telegram was received by the company to stop the goods. The company did not do so and were sued by the seller in damages. It was held that transit has ended as soon as goods were handed over to the buyer, which means that the company appointed GIP railway company to transport the goods, the carrier of the goods, or you can say bailey of the goods to the, the buyer. Now, once the person received there, the delivery of the goods have been set. Now the buyer took the goods from the cart and loaded it in his own cart. And after that, the company received a letter from the seller to stop the goods. In this, it would not be because the delivery of goods have already been taken place. So the company would not be liable to pay for any damages to the seller. Next subsection is interception to the 
by the buyer when the buyer or agent takes the delivery of the goods from the carrier the transit ends even before their arrival at the appointed destination in case the carrier delivers the goods before the arrival of the buyer although it is wrongful and the carrier may be held liable for the damages but the transit ends here which means where buyer or agent takes the delivery of the goods from the carrier which means if the com for example in the above case gip railway company gave the goods and delivered it to buyer transit ends at that place in case before arrival suppose buyer takes it before the appointed destination in case carrier delivers the goods before the arrival of the buyer although it is wrongful carrier would be liable for the damages in the case of for example the destination place to deliver the goods is delhi before that buyer took it in the midway of delhi so which means the transit ends there but in the case if he hand it over to the another person before the arrival of the buyer then the carrier has to suffer with the damages let's take an example in lyons versus hoppingen the buyer takes a seat as a passenger in a ship which was carrying the goods the goods court said that this does not amount to delivery to the buyer before the arrival at the appointed station which means the buyer was only driving the ship but the appointed station was destination was somewhere else so it would not be amounted to the delivery once the goods are handed over to the buyer through the carrier then only the stoppage of transaction of the rights would be ended now let's move to next subsection that is acknowledgement to the buyer the transit is considered to come to an end when the goods arrive at the appointed destination and the carrier acknowledges to the buyer or his agent that he is now holding the goods on his behalf it is immaterial if the goods are still in the carrier or the buyer has indicated another destination which means that once the transit of goods have arrived to this destination and the carrier has told to the buyer that these are the goods which you have been ordered and that has been informed to the seller with that it means that the goods have been received by the buyer the delivery of the goods have been done to the buyer it is immaterial if the goods are still in the carrier or buyer changed the destination in order to put to an end to the original contract of carriage a very clear acknowledgement is required by the carrier and the buyer let's take a case law to understand better whitehead versus anderson a quantity of timber was consigned on board when the ship arrived at the destination buyer went bankrupt buyer's agent came to the boat and told that he has come to take the possession the captain said that he will deliver only when the fleet is paid before this could be done seller sent a notice to stop and asked to send the goods to be delivered to the agent of the seller court said that since the transit has not ended carrier was within his rights of returning the goods the captain agreed to deliver on one condition that he need to fulfill that is to pay for the goods which has not been done until that the delivery or the stoppage of transit does not comes to an and which means there has not been any full complete acknowledgement so buyer does not acquire the possession of the goods acknowledgement of the goods by the buyer or carrier would be once the carrier received the amounts of the good the price paid and then only the right of the stoppage in the goods in transit would come to an end next is rejection by the buyer when the buyer rejects the good and the carrier or the bailee continues to possess them the goods are held to be still in transit this will also include the case when the seller himself refuses to take back the goods which means that once the buyer has received the goods to the carrier but he rejected to take the goods after uh, checking through it so which means the carrier or the bailee or the seller still has the right of the stoppage in the goods of the transit even if it can be in the case where the seller refuses to take back the goods which means if buyer refuses and seller told that now i would not take back the goods then only then also the right of transit would be in function let's move to next subsection delivery to the ship charted by the buyer it is a question of fact whether the carrier is acting independently or it is an agent of buyer at the time when the goods are delivered to a ship chartered by buyer as soon as the goods are loaded on the ship the transit ends if the carrier is acting as an 
agent, which means if the delivery of the goods is done by a ship chartered by buyer, as soon as goods are loaded on the ship, transit ends if the carrier is acting as an agent of the buyer, which means that suppose I went to order some particular product from a Bangalore. It was coming to the seashore to Mumbai via seaport. Now, I went to the Bangalore seaport only. I took the goods and now goods were loaded on the cart or the ship and my agent was there on the behalf of me. So which means the strides of transit in the stoppage has ended there once my agent is acting on the behalf of the buyer. Next is wrongful refusal to delivery. When the carrier wrongfully denies delivery, delivering the goods to the buyer, or his agent, the transit is at the end. It is obvious that goods should have arrived at their destination because otherwise the carrier has the right to refuse to deliver them. Which means once carrier wrongfully denies to deliver the goods, their transit comes to an end. In the case of Bird versus Brown, court discuss at when it is wrongful to refuse the delivery of goods. In this case, goods arrived at a destination, but the buyer has become insolvent. A merchant was acting for the seller who gave stop notice to the seller without authority. Subsequently, the trustee of the buyer demanded the goods and the buyer was insolvent. Carrier refused to give the delivery of the goods. Court said that after formal demand for the goods by trustee, there could be no valid stoppage in the transit, which means now we have formally demanded for the goods. So there can be no valid stoppage in the transit, which means the carrier has to deliver the goods to the buyer and there would be no wrongful refusal to the delivery. Let's move on to the last point to the subsection of section 50 that is of right of stoppage in goods in transit that is part delivery. In the case when the goods have been delivered partly, seller has a right to stop the delivery of the rest of the goods unless the part delivery shows an agreement to the possession of the whole. Take an example, A sells to B 20 kg of wheat. 10 kg has been transferred to B, but rest 10 kg is still in transit. In this case, B fails to pay. So A has the right to stop the goods in transit, which means a part of delivery has been done. And the next part when it was in the transit to be delivered, the person refused to pay or fails to pay. In that case, the right of stoppage in goods in transit would come to an end. So these are the rights of an unpaid seller in regarding right of stoppage of goods in transit, which ranges from section 50 to 52 and it has half certain subsection sevens ranging from part one, uh, subsection one to subsection B, part delivery, consignment delivery, how the delivery of goods is done with wrongful refusal, delivery to the buyer, acknowledgementing of delivery, rejection by the buyer, delivery to the buyer. So these are section make it clear that how does right of stoppage in golden transaction functions. Now let's move on to the next section that is the next kind of the rights which are available to the buyer that that is available to the seller unpaid seller that is right of resale these are the rights which we are discussing of the unpaid seller against the goods one was right of the lien second was the right of stoppage of goods in transit and the third one is right of resale which is present under section 54 which says that exercising the right of lien or stoppage does not rescind the agreement but reselling of the goods does without hit this right the other two rights of lien and stoppage would not be of much uses because he can only retain the goods until there these rights till the buyer pays back the money which means that an unpaid seller can resell the goods if the goods are of perishable nature when the unpaid seller notice of his intention to sell or when the seller expressively reserve a right of resale in the case of buyer makes a default which simply means that the right of lien and right of stoppage would not come into as much usage until the seller has a unpaid seller has a right of resale. Now the unpaid seller can perform this condition of right of resale under following condition. First, seller became before reselling the goods need to send a notice to the buyer in the case of perishable goods, giving him last chance to pay for the price and take back the goods. If buyer does not do so, then the seller has right to resell the goods. If the seller fails to give notice of his intention to resell, 
cannot claim damages from the buyer and he has to give any profit which means that if the goods are of a perishable seller need to send a notice to the buyer that you need to pay for these goods within a reasonable time and take the delivery if buyer fails to do so the seller has the right to resell it again if the seller fails to give a notice to the buyer then in the case of point the if seller resell it also he will not have the right to receive any kind of damages or profit from the buyer now if there is any loss in the resale of goods he can claim the loss from the buyer on the contrary if there is profit buyer cannot claim it which means the seller need to in the case if he has any loss in the resale of goods he can claim for that loss provided he have given a notice if there is a profit buyer he cannot claim it next point under this is seller gives rightful ownership to the buyer after the resale it does not matter notice of resale is given or not defaulted by the buyer which means seller has given rightful ownership to the buyer after the resale so there in notice or defaulting of the buyer would not come into picture next it sometimes seller reserve exclusive right to resale the goods if the buyer makes a default in payment in such cases buyer cannot ask for profit on sale if no notice is served and the seller has exclusive right of resale which means where seller has exclusively reserved a right of resale of the goods if buyer makes a default in payment so in this case the buyer cannot ask for any profit on resale even if no notice has been given by seller which means wherein seller has given a right that if you will not pay for these goods or if you make any default in payment i would resell it therein buyer would not have right to receive ask for any profit over the resale of the goods let's understand it better with a case law rv ward versus bingnell there was a contract of sale of two cars Wongot and Zodiac for eight fifty dollar. The buyer deposited twenty five dollar, but afterwards did not pay the price that is of the next car within a reasonable notice. The seller then tried to resale, but could be sold for dollar three fifty nine. He then claimed for damages that is the rest amount from the balance payment for ex as advertising expenses. Court held that once the seller resells the goods, the contract is rescinded and terminated, and he cannot claim the money, but he can ask advertising expenses and shortfall in the price of the Vanguard. Which means that once the default in payment is done by the buyer, if seller resells it, he cannot claim the money for asking it for reselling it, but he can ask for shortfall in the price of the Vanguard. Which means. wherein seller has exclusively given his right to resale in the case of the default of the buyer in making the payment therein cannot a uh, buyer cannot ask for any such profit on the resale and the seller has the exclusive right to resell it whether he has not given notice or not so thus the seller becomes an unpaid seller when either he had not been paid in full or the buyer has failed to meet the maturity of bills of exchange or negotiable instruments accepted by seller as condition condition the seller have various rights against goods than the buyer personally thus with this we concluded the rights of unpaid seller against the goods unpaid seller is one who has not received the price of the goods as a whole from the buyer or in the cases of bill of exchange or negotiable instrument which has been dishonored as a condition which may be given by the president due to uh, in lack of installment due to lack of money or the seller buyer becomes insolvent and the buyer is not able to pay the amount then the right of the unpaid seller would come into the picture and this right of unpaid seller is divided into two aspects two rights number one is right against the goods and right against the buyer personally this right against the goods are of three kinds of the unpaid seller one is right of lien that is to keep the possession of the goods until and unless the price is paid next is right in stoppage and transit which means of the goods which means that once goods have been in a transmission through a carrier or the bailey this unpaid seller has a right of stoppage in the goods in the re transit next the third one is right of resale which is present under 54 if he has exclusive right over the resale of perishable goods with giving proper notice he can resell it 
or if he has exclusive right wherein the buyer has default in making the payment the unpaid seller can resale it and the buyer cannot ask from any such profit so right of lien range from section 47 to 49 right of stoppage of goods in transit range from section 50 to 52 and right of resale range from section 54 so with this we have concluded the rights of unpaid seller against the good in the next lecture in continuance of this we will start with rights of unpaid seller against the buyer personally any doubt regarding this you can contact me through my mail id whatever assignments are given to you to the students i request you read the question first clearly read the notes the ppts listen to the lecture and then do your assignment and submit it on time thank you and have a good day